Got a lot of fun stuff planned for this video. We're gonna be talking about dice games, things that you can do with your kids that involve dice and learning at the same time. Hey, hey, you guys, it's Christina from The Purple Alphabet. I pulled together some fun activities, all including dice and learning so that you can learn through play at home with your kids. I'm really excited to show you these. If you're new here, you can also click subscribe and say hello down below in the comments. We do a lot of these kinds of activities, and so I would love it if you were part of the community too. And because I have a lot to show you, we're gonna get started right into it. So obviously for all of these activities, you're gonna need some dice, right? So I have a couple options for you. If you don't have just regular plain old you know like this style of dice then there's some other options you can do first of all look around your house to see if you have these in other games because if you have them in other games just pull them out and reuse them if you want to buy some I'm probably gonna put some in my store these are just one that I had been to have on hand you can get some at the Dollar Tree a whole package I think of eight or so for a dollar and you can get things like this these were actually kind of like a um, those little tchotchke gifts they give you at a conference and we happen to have these and we've used these so many times for learning activities if your child is of the age where they put things in their mouth this could be a choking hazard then you can get some big ones like this that are soft and fuzzy and they're not gonna hurt anyone or even the dollar store has these and so you can get some wet erase markers that's what these are wet erase markers to write on here and it won't rub off like a dry erase uh, you know what I'll, I'll just go ahead and put these in my Amazon store so you can find them I'll make a whole category about dice games but you can use that too or you can even make it block so be creative if you don't have the materials I never want you guys to feel like you have to go out and buy something in order to do these activities just kind of use what you have and make it work and then another little tip I have for you if if you have a child who's kind of wild with them, likes to throw them and they're going all over the place, a very simple thing is to get a container similar to this, probably a little bit bigger. This is just where I store them. And then you have your own shaker instantly. Like I said, it probably should be a little bit bigger. It still works, but, and then they're not going all over the place and they're just sh shaking them up and then getting their answer. So little tip. So if you're looking for the super, super easy, you know, pre-K level, maybe a little bit younger dice activities, I did say I have a video on that. I'm gonna put that down below in the description box. Some of these activities can be done for preschoolers as well, and then you can adapt them for older ages. So this is a free printable. It's called Roll and Dot the Number. Free, free, free. Yes, it's a free printable, and you know I always put the links right down below in the description box so you can go right to it. Just make sure you download the right thing. So what this person has done is just made a chart, and there's circles, and then on each circle there's a number that represents the, the die. So if your child already knows numbers, you know, they just kind of, this is, might be an easy thing for them. You can make it harder by using a timer, making it time, how fast can you do it? How many rolls can you get in and dot everything? But if your child's just learning numbers and number recognition with the dots on the, on the dice, then you would just basically roll and then dot. So I pulled out my do-a-dot markers here. I love my do-a-dot markers. These are the scented ones that I got at Lakeshore Learning, but I also think they're on Amazon and they just smell so good. So we love these. This one is mint chocolate or mint chip. Mm, love it, they're so cute. Okay, so you just roll, simple, simple, and then you dot, you find all the three. So you're doing some really great visual scanning. This, oh, my marker, there we go. It's been a while since we use these. There we go, gotta get the ink flowing. And you do some visual scanning going across. What probably will happen is your child will look all over the page for all these numbers, and that's great. But what you wanna try to encourage, if you can, is to go from uh, left to right, as you would for reading. So visual scanning for reading skills. If they don't do it very well, then you can encourage them. Okay, well, I think you missed some. Obviously, there's some on here that I missed. So why don't we start at the top and go all the way across, and so you have a little bit of learning opportunity there so that they get in that habit of going left to right this is also great when you do word searches and you can do all of the threes or you can take a turn and play a game to see who can fill them up so maybe you have someone else playing a brother and sister and so you would roll three and then do one three the next person will roll and see if somebody gets a whole row or if somebody gets the whole board filled up I don't know lots of variations on this and that's why I really liked it because you can kind of make it easy or harder depending on what you need so really simple and cute and it's free I'm bringing out my notebook. You guys know I've been using notebooks a lot in activities just because I like that I can do several different types of activities in one notebook. So I'm just pulling out a really old notebook that we do all kinds of stuff in, drawings and tests and spelling words and getting a blank page. And so I'm gonna set up this uh, game, basically rolling to make 10. All right, nice and big here so you can see it on camera. On one side, I'm gonna write the number 10. 
You can do as many of these as you want. Understanding what makes up 10 is part of Common Core math. And so what we're doing here is reinforcing school skills that they might have learned in school. And I'm just filling this out for them so that they don't have to do any work. You can print this out on the computer if you want, you know, the whole thing. So you can do this a couple different ways. So the first way is to keep on rolling both until you get 10, which might take a little bit of time. Or you can just roll one, put that number in, and then keep rolling this one until you get the number to make 10. So the child has to know what plus four equals 10 and then when it pops up, they can be able to put it in. So you're making 10 and that's just really simple with two. Now you can get a little bit more complicated if you wanted to and you can add in a third. So those kids who have already mastered two, num or two digit making 10, add in your third and you can do the same thing for three numbers to make 10. So like I said, these activities are meant to be adapted to the skill level and age of your child. So whatever they know, you need to base it off on either if you need to make it easier or if you need to make it harder, you get to decide and alter the activity for that. I'm just gonna give you some inspiration on how you can do it. Like in this, make 10. Let's switch up our materials a little bit and bring out a dry erase board. You can use the dry erase board with the make 10 game. You could use the make 10 game, or you could use this activity that I'm gonna show you with the dry erase board. You know what, it's just, Switching up the materials makes it a little bit more interesting for your kids, so that's why I like to switch it out. We are gonna do another game. So we're gonna put this, the circle, and a line. Fabulous. This is a greater than or less than dry erase game. So same thing, you're gonna roll your numbers here. We got a five and a four, we fill them in, and now you have to determine which one's greater or less than by filling in the circle in the middle. If you want, you can have them reverse the numbers. Oops, just moved it over. So now that you have a four and a five, then they can do it that way. Or you can keep rolling on one number, do all fives, you know, you can play around with it. So really easy, really simple, and you can add a timer and make it fast, see how many you can get or who can complete it the quickest. That's a really fun thing. So that is a greater than or less than activity. Keeping with our dry erase chart, I'm gonna make my own chart. You can also print these out online too and do it on paper. My handwriting is atrocious on camera, you guys. <laughs> Maybe it's just the marker. If we are starting off with the little littles who are now learning place value only, just start off with one and then you can roll them and put it in the one columns. Going up to the next level, we can do two, forget about the hundreds, and put these together in there and in there to make 64. So that would say 64. And of course, we get harder into the hundreds. We're throwing in a third. They can arrange these in the, how the way they want to arrange it and I'll show you that number. And they might even be able to say it, 262. Maybe you ask them to rearrange it. Now, what number is that? 622. 226. You get the idea, right? So really easy way to demonstrate place value by using a chart and a couple of these and you can rearrange them and show them how it changes the number. A great visual and definitely hands-on. Then you can also bring in something like this. This one came from Lakeshore Learning. I showed it to you in my, I believe I showed it to you in my base 10 video. This is very, very cheap. Don't have the price on here. I know it was like $5 or less, but it is a great place value chart because inside, if I pull up all these flaps here, just to show you, they have a place value all the way across, okay? Okay, so same concept as doing it over here, just some more manipulative kind of thing. And then what I like is you can, if you're not working on the higher place values, you can just close them up and not even be worried about them, right? If we did the same thing where we rolled the dice, we can arrange them in a way that we want. We can move our little cards to show the number in numeral form. And now we can verbally say it, 564. And now you can ask which number is in the 10 spot Six, which number is in the one spot, which number is in the hundred spot. And then you can do the rearranging if you wanted to do the rearranging of a different number and do the same thing over. Great practice, you guys, and really simple, really easy. So you can do it either with a tool like this, or you can do something really simple with a dry erase board or a pen and paper. Game Right sent me some games to check out. And the reason why I wanted to put these in the video is because they do invi involve dice too. This one's called Chill Out. It says it's a refreshing game of dice and ice for ages five and up. And it's the game is for two to four players and it only takes about 15 minutes to play which I think is great for that age level packaging is always so cute you guys all right so we got some stuff in here our instructions and the box is actually our game board so let's see we get these 24 ice cubes those look so cool these would actually make really great manipulatives that's the other thing too if you ever pull out pieces from games and stuff to use them in other things bonus 
There's 24 more. And then in this little baggie, we have some tokens and then one custom die. And it's custom because it has, there's your tokens. It has different things, different colors on each side. There's a little hand mark. There's a wild side. You can play up to four players. You, each player will just pick one of these little sections to be theirs. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is place three of these ice cubes in all of these trays here. Our four blueberry tokens, that's what these are, go in the center. And then everyone's gonna use this little color die. So what we're gonna do is roll this color die and basically the premise is, is to take the ice cubes from the matching colored tray to distribute them around the board and into our cups. So each person has one of these little cups and then we can snag a bonus blueberry if the matching tray is empty. So when all the ice cubes are gone, those are these little pieces here in these slots, you count up your ice cubes and blueberries in your cup and then whoever has the most wins. So if I were to roll here, so now that I've rolled the fuchsia, then I'm gonna pick which fuchsia ones I wanna pick from. I take all the cubes out, and now I drop one cube in each of the trays as I go around. I skip all of my opponent's cups, and I keep on going around until I'm out of cubes in my hand. And the next person would go and do the same thing. Okay, I played a couple more turns to simulate play with three other players. And as you can see, there's some here in the cups. And so as you go around, if you pass opponent's cups, you don't have to put an ice cube in there. But when you pass yours, you get to put one in there. And then if you roll a color, like this one here is blue, and there's no ice cubes in there, you get to take one of these little blueberries and put that in your cup. They're just worth more points at the end. There are some exceptions on this. There's a wild where you can take any color and any color tray and move it around the board. Or there's a little hand here, where's the hand, where you can steal an opponent's um, ice cube and put it into yours. The game goes until all of these ice cubes are out of these trays and into the cups, and then you add up the points at the end. It's very similar to Mancala. I know many of you have written me and said that you really love Mancala. Very, very simple and very similar, except it just has a little modern take on it. So if you like that game, chances are you're gonna really like this game, and I like that it has the counting involved and then the kind of the strategy of how you're gonna get the most ice cubes into your cup. Another way to work with dice and learn at the same time is to use some base 10 blocks. This is the same one I showed you in my base 10 videos. If you're looking for some base 10 activities and introducing place value, check out that video. I'll have to put that down below if I remember or put it up here in a little card for you. Uh, these are blocks that, base, uh, that represent place value. So for our sake, I'm just gonna pull out the ones, which are these little yellow pieces, and then our tens, which are our green rods here because or actually we I'll just bring out a hundred why not right we only really need six of these right <laughs> we would roll I'm using two at first here I'm gonna put the four and the one so we have four tens one two three four and one one what is this number 41 you can add in your third die if you want to or even go higher if you want to go higher so four Oops, 400. Look at me. I promise I know how to do this. <laughs> One, two, three, four hundreds, three tens, six ones. This number is 436. You can bring back your place value chart too if you wanted to have them write it out numerically, or you can even have them just write it down, right? In that same base 10 video, I also showed you something like this, which are base 10 stamps. Same concept. Inside here, there are stamps that represent these blocks. And so if you didn't have the blocks and you wanted something a little easier, you can get like a stamp pad like this one here. That one came from Lakeshore Learning, but I have a couple in my Amazon store too. And then you can use the stamps. So you would get a piece of paper and you would stamp out four 100s, which is this one right here, three tenths, and then six of these on a piece of paper. So sometimes the kids like the stamping better, sometimes they don't. My girls think these stamps are pretty cool, but they also do like these too because they feel like they're blocks and they can play with them. So here's some great things that you can do with the base 10 blocks and the dice and make some fun dice games with this. I couldn't believe it when I found this one, another free printable, and this one is Dice Yahtzee. Yes, if you like Yahtzee, you're gonna like this one. Um, it was also kind of cool because it has different levels on it and I'll kind of explain. So this is how it prints out and you're only gonna need one of these scorecards. It's kind of the same concept as Yahtzee, just slightly different. So there's one category here and then there's a number that you fill in that you're trying to get. They start off, um, you can do eight digit numbers, you can do five digit numbers, I think. And so there's different levels so that you start off easy. And then they have these qualifiers. So in order to get your numbers in this column, 
column, you need a number with three in the hundreds place. So I'm sorry, this says three digit numbers, not eight. The font was hard to read. <laughs> so you're playing with three and you just do a roll and everybody has their cards. And so they're looking to check off all these things in here. So this is a number with a three in the hundreds. So if you had that, let's say I did roll a three, then I could look at these dies and put the three in the hundred in my mind, because you're playing with other people and write it on here. Next one says number with five in the ones place, number with two in the tens place, number with tens and hundred digits that add up to six. So it gets even harder. So this is amazing. If you have a child that's probably first grade, can probably do this on up. And this is, would be a really, really cool activity to do. It's challenging and it's very visual and it's very hands-on. And of course it has that fun game aspect to it that they don't really feel like they're learning, that they're just trying to get these things. Here's a wild one. Any number can be written here. Number with three of the same digit, number with two of the same digits and number where digits add up to 11. And so in this little packet that you can print out, there's a lot of scorecards in there that you can print out and do different levels so highly recommend it like I said this one is free too and I'll put it down below in the description box. Game Right also sent me this to review and take a look at it's another dice game it's called Ratatat Roll. This one is for ages six and up and for two to five players it says also about 15 minutes for a whole game to be played. Okay let's see what we got going on here we have our instructions and all of our game pieces right inside I'm gonna pull this all out for you to take a look at. Looks like we get 45 game cards here with five of these icon cards, 15 reroll tokens, which are these right here. I'm gonna pop out one wild die, three numbered die, which I remember I said you can use dice from other games. Um, yeah, so we got three of the number dice here perfect reason to do some other activities, right? And then the cat chew of Liberty Pawn. So our object is gonna be to go around our little board here, trying to collect as many low scoring cat cards. These are all cats on here. So you see the game board here has five different color regions. There's green, there's orange, there's blue, there's um, sorry, that's red, <laughs> some blue, there's orange. You know, when I do these YouTube videos, sometimes my mind is thinking one thing and when I look at something, I say something else. It's very, very odd. So yeah, that's red, we have blue, orange, and then this pink fuchsia color. And we're gonna place the cat shoot of Liberty Pawn on one of the five block uh, wild die spaces. We shuffle the number cards and deal each player one card. So let's say that I got this one. So I know my card is nine, but nobody else knows that. Then we put a card for each of the color regions. So now that I know what the cards are around the board and it's my turn, I look around the board to see where I need to go to get the lowest available face-up card. In this case, we have a zero down here. So I know I need to get around there that far. Now, because it's all the way across the board, I know that I need a lot of spaces. So I probably would take all three dice. Maybe if the zero is up here, I would just do one to see how far I can get. Okay, so then I'm gonna roll all four. When I get here, I add up my number value here, six. So I have 11 in my value and then I have an icon. And so then I can look at my little chart here and see what that says. And I land there. Next, I look at my little icon here. I got a cat when I rolled. And so I check it on my chart. And this chart says, take the lowest scoring face up card. And so that's any on the board. So I got the zero after all. Place that with my cards here and then you continue to the next person. So this little one becomes really, really important when you're playing the game. And then according to our little chart here, it tells you what to do. This is like the game breaker, the one that throws you the curveballs. On this card, there's so many things that could happen. You could choose either the card that you land up or a card that's in the middle of the pile. So if I landed on there, I could take that card if I wanted to. This other icon, you can peek at all of your cards or one of your opponent's cards to know how much they have and how much and compared to how much you need. So there's a lot of things that can twist and turn this game into something that you weren't expecting. And then when you're all finished collecting cards, you flip them over, reveal them, count up, and whoever has the lowest score wins. This one is a lot more involved than the other game I showed you, but the thing is it's really fun because everything switches around and your strategy might get a big huge twist and turn if someone steals your card or whatever you roll on the die. I actually can't wait till the girls come home so we can play this one together. I think they're gonna really like it. Of course, I need to know your ideas and inspirations too. If you have any anything that you would like to see in a video, let me know down below in the comments and I will add it to my video list <laughs> because you guys give such great ideas. Make sure to click subscribe to see more videos like this and give me a thumbs up to show your love.